today we're gonna compare a flat bar gravel bike with a hard tail drop bar bike. We're gonna convert and compare this epic hard tail with this salsa cutthroat. So we're gonna swap the bars from this bike to this bike to see how it changes the ride, if it's actually worth doing, and if it's something I would suggest to others. And to make sure this is done right, we gotta bring it to the pros at Cycle Path, because they know how to do this, and I do not. So we're good, we're just gonna switch the bars on both of these. I think it's gonna make both bikes better. Thanks guys. Oh, this is gonna be so good. So the plan is to do the same loop on both of these bikes and report on the findings. And this route has a good mix of paved, gravel, and single track. All bases covered. I think we're gonna start with the flat bar gravel bike. And that just feels a little more baseline, a little less variable. Here we go. Right away, first impressions, playful. Prerequisite, highway miles. This riding position is very upright, very comfortable, which lends itself to a playful, agile ride experience. On a short excursion, this is perfect. For a long ride, this position might get old as there's only one place to put your hands. Oh great, now it's actually raining. One thing to note about this bike, this is a Salsa Cutthroat, which they market as a drop bar mountain bike, which means this bike is gonna be a little more conducive or friendly with the flat bars. But honestly, it doesn't feel that much like a mountain bike. It just leans a little more mountain bike, meaning that this is still a viable way to test out what flat bars are like on a gravel bike. That's actually a drop bar mountain bike. It's like a gravel bike with an identity crisis. This thing's set up with Chris King fusion fiber wheels, SRAM access Eagle group, and an attitude that just won't quit. And we're running big honking 29er by 2.3 tires. Look at those honkers. Climbing, it's great. Out of the saddle, it's like a power up. Put a little English on it, get to where you're going. Go Party mode. <laughs> Descending on the rowdy single track with this is a match made in heaven. This setup is so much fun. So an interesting thing to note is this bike is suspension corrected for a hundred millimeters of travel, which I actually set up at one point and rode as a hard tail drop bar mountain bike. But the thing is, I didn't like it. I thought it actually took away from the experience of this bike. What it claimed to do on single track, I would have rather done on a regular flat bar hardtail. So I'm super curious to see what this Epic is gonna feel like with drop bars on it. There's only one way to find out. Woo! If I was gonna keep this bike, I would probably put a little bit longer stem on it. All right, drop bar hardtail, but first. That's better. Let's get weird. First thing I noticed right away, incredibly stretched out compared to the cutthroat. It's because the stems are like night and day difference. This is only a 90 millimeter stem, which for drop bars is short, but for mountain bikes is long. Can't win. This thing has a tremendous amount of wheel flop. It is like really boaty to turn. Very interesting, I don't know what it is. I'm not even that tired from the previous ride, but this rig feels super sloggy. Like, it makes me feel like my body's more tired than it is. It's really confusing. This fork locks out pretty good. It doesn't really move that much. 
when you're climbing, which is great, but it does move just a little bit. So because of that, you get a little bop and drag. It starts adding up. You feel it, it's a little bit. But for the descending, this thing's gonna be, mm. This bike is an epic carbon hardtail. A similar build to the cutthroat with SRAM one by with an eagle in the back. The main difference is this 100 millimeter SID suspension fork, making it adventure qualified. Wait, what size tires? 29 by 2.4. The other thing that's cool about SRAM access or wireless is no matter what level components you have, they all communicate. So these rival shifters work with the X01 derailleur on this bike and the GX derailleur on the cutthroat. So it doesn't matter what setup you have, you can mix and match and they're all gonna communicate, which is, yeah, that's, that's just cool. <laughs> Actually, feels fine. Oh man, grind it. Open this fork up. Oh yeah. Oh, man. This thing takes care of business on the descents, but I am noticing that in the tight single track, it's a little saucy. Like turning is not as responsive as I would like it to be. Hey, if you're feeling any of this, you know, you could subscribe if you want, no, no pressure. I'm just saying, if you're into weird bike swaps and other creepy things, this is your place. Oh, like butter. I gotta admit though, I really like the way that this bike looks. What do you think? You like the way it looks? You think it looks silly? Let me know. <laughs> this bike is fun. I will give it that. And I could absolutely sit on this bike for way too many hours. Much more than that cutthroat. That cutthroat is cool for a short amount of time. This is different kind of cool for a longer amount of time. All right, does that make sense? Oh, lower center of gravity, absolutely. But agility is limited. It's not as agile. No, not at all. It's still fun, but it's, yeah, it's, it, oh Jesus. Hell <laughs> yeah, now I get to wash two bikes. This guy likes to rowdy. Oh boy, do I have some things to say. After consulting my notes and the Oracle, here is my take on the flat bar gravel bike. This setup actually surprised me. It was comfortable, it was capable, and it was super fun. I think this setup makes a lot of sense for people that either grew up with mountain bike or BMX bike, are just looking to change up their current setup for something fresh, or if they're looking to, I forgot it now, I just had it. You're someone who's finding yourself riding more and more single track and just looking for a little bit more of an edge Doing this is gonna make your bike much more comfortable, confident, and capable on the trails. That is until you finally buck up and get an actual mountain bike. I mean, they all, they serve purposes. If you're thinking of doing this, there's a few things you should consider first. You'll have to think about the brake levers and shifters, plus if they're compatible with the current derailleur you have, unless you have access, SRAM wireless, then it's a seamless transition. You'll also have to deal with the brakes and a potential brake bleed if you're running hydraulic and all the knowledge to make this happen. Or if you're like me, you'll just bring it to the pros and save yourself a week and a half worth of cursing. All of this is to say is this is a thing. It's not a quick overnight switch. It's a bit of an investment which could be worth it depending on your use case. Or you just build up a second bike with this setup, which is, I think that's actually the real, that's a good idea. All right, let's talk freak bikes. I have been such a fan of this concept for the longest time, which means I had a lot of faith in this setup, which surprises me to say that this just wasn't my favorite. 
I personally didn't like the way this handled with all the wheel flop. With these bars, this bike felt like it had less control in the single track than it would have with just the regular flat bars. While I did enjoy the comfort of the multiple hand positions, I personally don't think I would want to take this bike on really big rides. It's just a lot of bike to push around. What if that ride was all on single track? Well, then I'd rather run it with flat bars. And what if that ride was on gravel? Well, I'd just rather do it with a gravel bike. With that said, this thing is novel and fun to ride. And I think there are certain use cases where this does make sense. For anyone that's looking for as much advantage as they can on gravel routes that are particularly rowdy, this is gonna help especially in the dirt descents. It just happens to be a lot of bike that you have to deal with in between. And more and more people doing the Great Divide are riding these kinds of bikes. Which begs the question, how many of us are actually riding the Great Divide? You know, there's a use case, it's just a small use case. But don't let me dissuade you from setting up another bike. If you feel compelled to set one up, then I think you deserve it. Wait, what I wanna know, what do you think about all this? Are you gonna set either of these up? I'm, I'm dying to know what you think. Let me know. Now, to get a full perspective of what I went through with the cutthroat with the full suspension bike, you'll have to check out this video. We dive ever so softly into the deep end. Yeah, soft nose, full, full send, raw.